Hello and welcome to yet another video of Cornerstones of Math. Today we are going to solve the system of equations sine y equals square root of 2 sine x and tangent y equals square root of 3 tangent x. And the ranges of x and y are both given as greater than or equal to 0 and less than 2 pi. So only during a single period of the sine function. Alright, let's solve this. I will start from this second equation. Since tangent is sine divided by cosine, we can write this equation as sine y over cosine y equals square root of 3 sine x over cosine x. So we have sines on the numerators, so we can use equation 1. Using the first equation, let us change this sine y into square root of 2 sine x. So we have square root of 2 sine x over cosine y equals square root of 3 sine x over cosine x. This equation is pretty useful because it has sine x on both sides which can act as a common factor. That is, if we multiply cosine x cosine y on both sides, we have square root of 2 sine x cosine x equals square root of 3 sine x cosine y so square root of 2 sine x cosine x minus square root of 3 sine x cosine y equals 0. And since sine x is common, we have sine x times square root of 2 cosine x minus square root of 3 cosine y equals 0. So we have sine x equals 0 or square root of 2 cosine x minus square root of 3 cosine y equals 0. So now the problem is divided into two cases. For the first case where sine x is 0, since we have this range condition, we simply have x equals 0 or pi. And personally, I think the most efficient way to find these values is by using graphs. Now let us find y using the first equation. Since sine x is 0, we have sine y equals 0, which gives y equals 0 and pi. So x can have values of 0 and pi, and for each value of x, y can also have values of 0 and pi. Therefore, we obtain roots 0, 0, 0, pi, pi, 0, and pi, pi. You can easily check that all of these roots satisfy both equations 1 and 2. Now let's move on to the next case. So the second case is when square root of 2 cosine x minus square root of 3 cosine y equals 0. Here we have square root of 3 cosine y equals square root of 2 cosine x. And let's call this equation 3. Now if we compare this with equation 1, we can make some interesting observations. First, x is only on the right hand side and y is only on the left hand side. Moreover, both sine x and cosine x are multiplied by same number square root of 2. This means that we can use another method of eliminating a variable. Squaring and adding up to use sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So from 1 squared plus 3 squared, we have sine squared y plus 3 cosine squared y equals 2 sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And since this part is 1, we have sine squared y plus 3. And let's change this cosine squared y into 1 minus sine squared y. So we have this equals 2. So we have sine squared y plus 3 minus 3 sine squared y equals 2. So sine squared y must be equal to 1 half. Therefore, sine y equals plus minus 1 over square root of 2. And since the range of y is limited from 0 to 2 pi, the possible values for y are, again by using the graph, y equals pi over 4, 3 over 4 pi, 5 over 4 pi, and 7 over 4 pi. Now let us find x for each case. First, when y equals pi over 4, equations 1 and 2 become sine y, so sine pi over 4, which is 1 over square root of 2, equals square root of 2 sine x. And for equation 2, tangent pi over 4, so 1 equals square root of 3 tangent x. 
So we have sine x equals one half and tangent x equals one over square root of three. We indeed have to use both equations since the root must satisfy both equations. And from the graphs of sine and tangent, we can find that the value satisfying both of these equations is x equals pi over 6. So we have root pi over 6, pi over 4. Next, when y equals 3 over 4 pi, then equations 1 and 2 become sine x equals 1 half and tangent x equals minus 1 over square root of 3. So in this case, the value of x that satisfies both of these equations is x equals 5 over 6 pi, as can be seen from here. So we have 5 over 6 pi and 3 over 4 pi. You can easily find the quadrant in which angle x is located using the following property. For angles on the first quadrant, sine, cosine, and tangent of those angles are all positive. On the second quadrant, only sine values are positive, thus cosines and tangents are negative. On the third quadrant, only tangent is positive, and on the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. In this case, we have positive sine value and negative tangent value, so we know that x is an angle on the second quadrant. The next case, when y equals 5 over 4 pi, we have sine x equals minus 1 half and tangent x equals 1 over square root of 3. So now we have x equals 7 over 6 pi. And as can be inferred from the negative sine value and positive tangent value, x is now an angle on the third quadrant. So x comma y is 7 over 6 pi comma 5 over 4 pi. And for the last case, when y equals 7 over 4 pi, we have sine x equals minus 1 half and tangent x equals minus 1 over square root of 3. Therefore, now we have x equals 11 over 6 pi right here, which is an angle on the fourth quadrant. So x comma y equals 11 over 6 pi and 7 over 4 pi. Therefore, from case 2, we obtain these four pairs of roots. And combined with these four pairs of roots from case 1, the roots are 0, 0, 0, pi, pi, 0, pi, pi, 6 over pi, 4 over pi, 5 over 6 pi, 3 over 4 pi, 7 over 6 pi, 5 over 4 pi, and finally, 11 over 6 pi, 7 over 4 pi. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe buttons, and please go check out my other videos as well. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in another video.